Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. It is a privilege to be here. It's, it was an honor to work with Alec on this uh, study. Arthur and I had so much fun uh, putting this together, and uh, you, uh, Jonathan and the rest of the team, you did such a fabulous job in putting this together. We hope this becomes an annual event. Now that we've rank, ranked the states in terms of which of the ones are the most pro-growth and the least pro-growth, we want to monitor your behavior as state legislators and find out you know, which ones are moving up and down the scale. So uh, I, have, uh, I feel very privileged to have done this uh, in conjunction with, uh, with Alec and with Arthur Laffer. Uh, and I'm so um, privileged also to have won this award. I think it's the first time in my life I've ever won an award that Arthur Laffer has not won. So that is a, that is a, a, a great privilege too. Um, I wanted to say one thing about uh, Arthur. You know, you talked about us jostling a little bit, and, and I kind of want to tell you one story in all seriousness about this guy. Um, some of you may know, uh, I don't know how many of you watch Larry Kudlow's show on CNBC, but Larry's a good friend of Arthur's and mine, and, and Larry's one of the great economists in this country. And so once or twice a week, I do a segment with Robert Reich, you know, the economist who's about this high, uh, and, uh, he, you know, very liberal. And he and I are good friends, but um, we don't agree with, on any policies. And so last night, uh, Larry called, and he said, you know, we want to have you on again, but Robert Reich is not available. Do you know any other midget economists who might be able to go on the panel with you? Let's see, midget economists, midget, Arthur Laffer, he can do it. So Arthur came on with me and uh, we had a good time last night. Um, I'll tell you one other thing about Arthur, another serious thing about this guy. He was ranked uh, by Time Magazine as one of the 100 greatest minds of the 20th century. <laughs> well deserving which uh, only goes to prove that you can put a, a big mind in a short body. Uh, so let me talk a little bit about the study. Um, eight million Americans last year, a record number of Americans, moved from one state to another. They packed up their bags, they left wherever they were, and they looked for sunnier, uh, more competitive, uh, more opportunistic uh, opportunities around the country. This was, as I said, more Americans than have ever moved before. America is on the move. America is on the go. People in this country are looking for places where they can find jobs, where they can find economic opportunities, where they can hi find high wages. And what we find in the study, very simply, is that these migration patterns are not random. It's not as if people are just moving around from one state to another randomly. How do they pick states uh, to move? And what are the determinations of what states are really growing and which states are falling behind? Now, it used to be people said, well, you know, the big determinant of where people uh, move to is climate. You know, nobody likes to, most people don't like to live in really cold areas like you know, Minnesota or Alaska. So they're going to, you know, it's natural that there's been a migration to the south because the weather's a lot balmier and, uh, you know, you have more sunny days there and there's less snow. Uh, and that used to be what liberals said, that policy doesn't matter, it's all about the weather. Uh, there's one problem with that thesis, though, and that is what we found in our study is that guess which state in the country ranks in the top five of losing population? California. Any Californians here? Uh, California ranks uh, fifth in, in population loss. For the first time in the history of California, except for one other decade, ca more Americans actually moved out of California since 2000 then moved into the state, which is amazing. I mean, you have to have some really befuddled and boneheaded policies to make people want to leave the golden state of California. But the, uh, but the state legislature there has proven up, for the, up to the task. And so you see this, uh, you know, uh, I actually was on the radio uh, in uh, Sacramento recently with the, uh, with the Senate Majority le Leader there, and we were talking about the budget crisis there, and, and this woman said, you know, we've got this $10 billion budget deficit, but all we really need to do to solve this crisis is to raise taxes on rich people and businesses. I mean, she actually said this, we've got to raise taxes on businesses and rich people. Now, it's pretty evident this woman didn't have her trade table in the upright and locked position, but the, the fact that she would make this this case. I mean, there are, as Arthur Laffer has taught me many times, you keep taxing businesses and you can't keep taxing high income people and there aren't going to be too many left in the state. And that's precisely actually what has happened in this decade. It's not just a random sample of people who have left. The people who tend to leave tend to be the wealth producers, the job creators, the entrepreneurs, the risk uh, takers. You know, you're from uh, Nevada. Uh, Every time I fly into um, Las Vegas, which is maybe once or twice a year, you know, you fly into that airport, 
in Las Vegas is just bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And why is that? I would guess 80% of those new people are people who fled uh, California. Nine, what is it, nine and a half percent in income tax in California, zero percent income tax in, in Nevada. And we found, <laughs> right, let's, let's give a, a round of applause for, for Nevada. We found in our study that one of the top factors that leads people to leave one state and to co go to another is the income tax. And so my first piece of uh, policy advice to you is get going cutting your tax rates. Get going cutting your business tax rates, your income tax rates. You know, people, uh, I go to a lot of states and I tell places that have a 7 or 8% income tax rate, I say, you know what you ought to do? Get rid of your income tax. And people start hyperventilating. I mean, the politicians do. They, oh my God, get rid of our income tax. You couldn't possibly do that. How could, how could our state function? Without an income tax. This is what people will say in states like Oregon and, and California and Michigan. And I say, well, that's an interesting question because there's nine states in America that function very well without an income tax. <laughs> and those are the states that are really growing. And so let's do this. Let's, let's start with a flat, or at least a low flat rate tax, but ultimately your goal as legislators to make your state uh, number one would be to eliminate your income tax. Now, Arthur and I, have been working around the states, right, Arthur? And our, what we're doing is trying to tell state legislators that we will be, give a big award to the first state in this decade that eliminates its income tax. So get going, folks, because this is a, a contest you certainly uh, would like to win. Um, well, yeah, for the nine that don't have an income tax, you, you do, you're disqualified from this. Uh, from this. <laughs> um, look, these are not, one of the points that I'd like to make to you is these are not really revolutionary ideas that Arthur Laffer and I are talking about. You know, it used to be when Art Laffer came uh, to this town in 1981 with the greatest president of the 20th century, Ronald Reagan. It's, there's no... <clears throat> when, when, when Laffer and Reagan came to this town, uh, they came to this town with the idea that we we're going to get inflation under control, we were going to gut cut tax rates, we were going to get government expenditures under control. Uh, at the time, these seemed like really radical ideas. But you know what's happened? First of all, since that time, since Reagan t cut taxes in this country, the wealth in the United States has increased from $22 trillion to $57 trillion. We've seen more wealth created in this country over the last 25 years than, any, uh, than over any other period in our history. In fact, more wealth created in the last 25 years than the previous 200 years. And so it's been a great run. What, 47 million new jobs uh, in this country. Over that same time period, Europe has only created 8 million jobs. So we've created about five or six new jobs for every new job that Europe created. How did we do it? We cut inflation, we cut interest, uh, and we cut tax rates. Now, here's the sad part of this story, though, and this is where we've got to get working uh, as, uh, as state lawmakers and federal lawmakers. Their Reaganomics, the idea of cutting tax rates to become more competitive, this has become the economic operating system all over the world, ladies and gentlemen. It's incredible. It's the greatest story, uh, as my friend Larry Kudlow says, it's the greatest story never told. There, when, when Arthur Laffer started talking about these ideas, uh, what was that, about 50 years ago, Arthur, something like that? Uh, no, but seriously, about 20 years ago when he started talking about this, there was one country, there was one country in the world that had a flat tax. Anybody know what country that was? Hong Kong. Hong Kong was the only country in the world that had a flat tax. Today, anybody want to take a guess at how many flat tax countries there are? 26. There are 26 countries in the world. Almost every week, you know, uh, we'll get a call from an economic minister from one of these Eastern European countries saying, we're going we're to adopt the uh, Arthur Laffer, Ronald Reagan flat tax. Um, just two weeks ago, there were elections in Poland. And the new uh, prime minister of Poland, I don't know anything about him, except what I do know is that in his first press conference, he said, in Poland, we are going to put in place a 15% flat tax. And then a week later, the, uh, the president of Bulgaria said, we're going to do Poland one better. We're going to have a 10% flat tax. Ladies and gentlemen, these tax rates are falling over the world. If you don't think these ideas work, Look at what's happening in Germany, France, and Sweden. I mean, these are three countries that have been the most socialistic over the last 25 years of virtually any other countries in the world. Sweden has been the epicenter of socialism, you know, the grand experiment in socialism. Those countries are rapidly cutting their corporate and personal income tax rates. Why? Because they want to be more competitive. 